This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, Baruch Hashem, thank you so much for uh, inviting us and calling us. And um, it's a it's a pleasure, it's a privilege um, to to find ourselves in our journeys finding um, reflections, mirrors of, of our inner truth. I said it many times in my lectures that when you sit in the crowd and you listen to, to my speech, so the fact that it makes sense to you, that you relate to some of my words, it's because that you have similar thoughts in your own mind, or else you, you wouldn't communicate, you wouldn't understand, like, what is he saying, what is he talking about, you wouldn't relate. It's familiar to you from your own inner world, and that's why you feel connected. So, for me, even though that I don't hear my, my friends, my, my audience, my students, I don't hear them like they hear me, but the fact that certain speech is coming out of my mouth, for me, it's the evident of who am I speaking with. Because the words that the Creator is putting in my mouth are the words that are being delivered to you. From heaven there is a certain path, certain channel of communication that is delivering a unique content in every class, it depends on the people that are coming. And I can see the difference because like, I'm going to places and Yesterday, one of my students sent me a message before the class, if I can speak about Shalom Bayit, peace in the house. I said, yes, for sure. I was so determined to talk about that subject, and I have like my, my own thoughts. I said, yes, for sure. And when I just opened my mouth, trying to talk about that concept, it just like tiny bird that flew out from the window. I was not able to talk about Shalom Bayit because the audience, the people that were there, were supposed to receive something else. And it's not that my heavenly thoughts are telling me so and so. It's just like it's it's a certain spirit that is that that you feel when you come. So I feel a very deep privilege of meeting people that when I'm about to open my mouth, I feel a lot of honesty and I feel a lot of uh, like deep inner search and also an individual search um, that is impressing me. I, I relate to that. I appreciate that. In my search for the truth, I found the Jewish religion as a source of knowledge, of information, ancient wisdom. And for many years, I felt that that's it. Like, I found the treasure, and, and here I'm going to stay. What that brought me to live for 12 years of my life in a very close and orthodox area in Jerusalem, totally committed and connected to the customs and to the orthodox um, way of life. But after certain years of being so observant and strict, I realized that I, I lost something in my journey. I lost my identity. I lost myself in that search. And with the love and the ways of communication in our family, in our house, 
we were able to recognize it because we were talking about it and we felt like all the time something was wrong, all the time something was missing, all the time we had to go and complete our spirituality from external source, sources, to go into like no one ever goes to the beach, no one ever goes to the desert, no one ever goes to the forest, but we had to make a bonfire for our children, like we had to, we had to, to teach them, we had to, so we would go in the middle of the night and we would drive for three hours to, to, the, to the sea and we would wait until the sunrise that the kids will see the sea because there's no sea in Jerusalem and of course not in those neighborhoods. That, so like we had to go and to drive and then the kids that, and, and, and like we must let them see the sea before that the women and, and, and people, naked people, will come to, to So, okay, you have from 5.30 till 7, so let's... It's crazy, but it, it's, it's a crazy struggle of your desire to be connected to something that you maybe believe that you belong to or that you wish to be part of or whatever, to your reality that there is also a spirit, life, that, that uh, is blowing inside of you. And not only like the rules and the methods and, 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 and the, the patterns uh, of, of, of what you've been told to do. So, with all my appreciation and all of my understanding to the truth of the Torah, of the Bible, and of the Chachamim, the righteous scholars that guided us, I must say that in a way, we are rebels. We're breaking the fence and, and running out to, to, to the world, and delivering a certain message that is unique in a way. Now, I think that we're not violating anything by doing that. I think that we're not breaking no rules by doing it, but we are, for sure, breaking the, the code, the, the society code of, of the ghetto. Like, we're not belong over there, we cannot come back. Like, after that we did what that we have done until today, the last, they say, five, six years, we cannot go back. Like, we're not, we're not welcome anymore. That's because we burned some bridges along the way and, and, and happy to, very happy to. It was, it, was, it was a nice fire to watch. <laughs> it was okay. It, it gave us something to see those bridges burn. And so we're happy for that. When you ask me, where is your home? So the real answer is where your heart is at. Because when we're saying there is no place like home, I think that you can like go into that simple sentence and say there is no place like home. There is no place like to home. There is no place because home, the Gemara, the ancient scripts. One of the wise people is saying over there. I think it was Rabbi Rabbi Yudan Nasi. I think it was him. I'm not sure, but one of the ancient righteous ones. He said. I never called my wife my wife. I called her my house, like my home. Like your home is 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 something that is in, in your heart. That's your home. Like I'm gonna find myself today in Jerusalem, the place that I lived 39 years of my life, and and I will feel disconnected because my heart is here with you. Like we're doing our mission crossing the country and moving and going from one village to the next, from one community, from one house, a synagogue, a center, like whatever. And, and, and we feel that we belong with the people. That's where we really feel the connection. When, when we see the honest eyesight, look in the eyes of the people, we see the, the connection, we see the completion, we see that we, we gave something, so then we know that we did our part. We know that we, we, can, we can relate to that. <laughs> That's our home. Our home is, uh, is on the road right now, on the roads right now. 
There is something very um, deep and meaningful that I am um, thinking of in this last tour, in this tour, and it's very deep and meaningful for me. And again, like I said, it's, it's waking up in my mind and in my heart because I'm meeting those souls in my journey. And I'm talking about the concept of the souls of Israel, about the holy tribes of Israel. We know that from the historical side of the story, of reality, the majority of our nation went to exile after the days of King David. So we're talking about 2,500 years ago. We're, we're talking about like huge amounts of time that 10 of 12 tribes went somewhere and no one can track them down. Now, you have some evidence of certain tribes and certain communities around the world that still keeps a certain tradition. They're still like keeping certain rules from days of, of first temple, of, of like earliest days, things that Jewish traditional people are not keeping today. Like they are still, for an example, sacrificing sacrifices on on, on complete stones altars, for an example. They, they keep ritual slaughter, they like certain things. They are lighting candles of Shabbat. Some of those tribes are wearing something that's similar to tzitzit. Whatever, certain things people are keeping over there somewhere in the world in, in certain points. But, again, the majority of those lost souls that we don't know who they are, we don't know who they are, but they are out there. Somewhere they are alive. Now, physically you cannot track them, you cannot recognize them, because also the Jewish nation, the differences between a Yemenite person to the Ashkenazi, Moroccan to, to, to Litvish, like they look different because hundreds of years or thousands of years in certain states in, in Europe or in Africa, made the difference. So the color of the skin been changed and the accent been changed and, and, and also different cultures and, and different um, uh, customs. So it's very hard to track with your eyes. The only way really to track is with your heart. To explain how you can recognize with your heart is is interesting. Few people ask me how I'm gonna know who my soulmate is. I'm gonna recognize my future wife, my future husband. It's like a challenge. And I said, it is a challenge because even if now I'm gonna describe to you, for you, in detail, exactly what's gonna be the look of your wife, still, there's going to be a line of 100,000 women that will answer to that description. Like, she's going to be 5.8 and brown hair, green eyes, thin lips. Uh, like, uh, like what, what you, how can you cannot put the finger on that person by physical description? No way. The only way really to recognize that person is when you feel that it's him when you know that it's hair, like it's something inner, it's a spiritual thing, it's not a physical description. So how are you going to know? If you're following your lusts, your desires, or your hopes, or whatever, still you can say, oh, I want my wife to be intelligent, I want my husband to be funny, I like... Still, you don't know, like, there are many people that are funny, there are many people that are intelligent, and many people that are pretending to be so, like, well, how are you going to put your finger? Again, you don't know. So I gave an advice. I said, your soulmate is, she is connected to you in your soul. Means that the thing that you have that is similar is your spirit. So when you're going to know your spirit, when you're going to find yourself, 
That will be the moment that you will be able to recognize your soulmate. Because you're carrying a spiritual soul that is mutual, that is the same. When you recognize yourself, now you can recognize your soulmate. So when you are connecting yourself to your spiritual Israeli roots of your soul, that's the moment that you can start recognizing souls that are coming from that holy family, the nation of Israel. Because it can be Muslim today, he can be Christian, he can be Mormon, and he, like, he can be whatever, like he can be un, un, untrackable. <laughs> you cannot recognize him. He can be the last person in the world that you will think that is Jewish, that is Israeli. And he is. The only way really to know it is by connecting yourself to your roots and finding it inside of yourself. So now, how am I going to know about myself? Who am I? If I belong to that nation or not? So I have a very simple method for that. Like, first of all, what are you doing here? Like, if you found yourself here, so you're, you're stuck with us. Like, it's, it's an answer. You, like, or else what are you doing here? If you're not here to hate me, so, so, so you're one of us, like, or else you wouldn't come. Your heart wouldn't pull you for years in the nose from one life experience to the next and like to open another book and another clarification and another experience, another inspiration. Like the Creator is, is taking you in a certain path that, that is opening your eyes, that is, that, that is exposing you from within to your inner desire of, of learning, of spiritual growth, of finding a purpose to life, meaning to life, what, like all those questions belongs to you. The fact that you are finding yourself searching and asking and questioning and doubting and, and, and struggling with those questions and finding those answers and like, that's the answer. That, that's, that's exactly who you are. That's, that's exactly what, what it happens with you. There's a very deep and interesting story about a, a person that um, for years was seeking, searching for the truth and he was Christian and he had many questions and he was learning in, 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 a, in a church, whatever, in Sunday school, I, I don't know how it goes over there, but like he was learning, he was educated, religious, Christian. But he had many, many questions, too many questions for the church. They, they couldn't answer. So he found himself out at the end of the day. He found himself out. And then he said, okay, but I need to, I need to, I need to keep on, on asking. Yeah, people relate to that. Yeah, I know. But, but you know what? It's not, only, it's not like you can find yourself out of, out of the Jewish community exactly in the same way when you start. Like, I, I, I ask too many questions as well, and I, I found myself out in, in so, so many ways. It's, like, it's not only out of the church. Like, okay, out of the church, out of the mosque, out of the temples, out of the synagogues. Like, you can find yourself out in many ways. Out of the college, out of your parents' house, like, it's okay. <laughs> so that guy was asking too many questions and found himself out, and then he started asking, okay, so what's the purpose? Where, where am I going to search? And he said to himself, okay, Islam is the second in size religion in the world. I'm, I'm going to go ask over there. That's what he felt like. If not Christianity, I'm going to go to Islam. The, in, that in, in his area, he lived in France, that guy is, is, is from France, that was his reality, his environment, and he went and started talking to, to teachers from, from Islam and asking and questioning, and he found himself, he was very inspired, very impressed, no more uh, New Testament, he found answers, go to the source, whatever, and, and like what? He felt good. For many years he was learning and found himself and was very, felt very comfortable, but he had one question. 
He couldn't understand why the Muslims, they hate the Jews. Why they hate the Jewish people? Because the Bible is full with love and appreciation and words of grace and praises for the Jewish nation. And, and, but all the conversations and all the talks and everything is going after. And then he went and asked his teacher, why are we hating the Jewish people? The Quran and the Bible, the Torah is telling us the, 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 that we should love each other and that we should respect that nation. So why hate? So he told him, listen, it's a decree from heaven. That's what they decreed on us. And they are our enemies, and you, we're not talking about that thing anymore. It's like it's a deal, it's a done deal. It's the, that's the that's the package. You want it, you want it, take it. You don't want, leave it. That's that's how it goes. So he couldn't live with that answer. It wasn't an answer for him. And then he said to himself, "Okay, the most ancient religion, the source of all, is Judaism. I'm going to go and search over them." And then he went, started talking, started the, the conversion process. Very fast he felt that he found its place, his place, and he was satisfied, happy, proud of himself, sad, and learned and everything. The conversion process was very easy for him. He was very educated. He was not married. Everything was perfect for him very fast. Things ran very fast for him. And he went to the mikveh and circumcised and everything. Before the mikveh, that mikveh is the last step of conversion, become Jewish, all the guys in the yeshiva where that he was learning told him mikveh is a purifying thing, it's a spiritual experience, you don't know. When you go to the mikveh, you, you feel such like light. Okay, he was so, he expected it, he was so like happy waiting for that holy moment. And then he found himself naked with no clothes, going into those warm water, dipping, okay, once, twice, three times, went out of the mikveh, didn't feel no real excitement, went back to the shiva, sat and learned, and like suddenly he started asking himself, maybe you were doing the wrong thing, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe the fact that you converted to Judaism was wrong. He started doubting everything right after his, the completion of his conversion. And then he said, that's like I'm quoting him, that's what he said. In that moment that I heard my evil inclination, thoughts in my mind, telling me maybe the decision you took was wrong, I realized that I made the right choice. Why? How come? He was doubting himself. But why? How he found out that he was taking the right path? He said, because until that day, I was my own negative thoughts. I was always thinking in a negative way. But after I came out of the mikveh, my negative thoughts were thoughts of someone else. Someone in my mind was battling me. Suddenly I found myself. Suddenly he was not the enemy. Suddenly he was the pure soul that made a mistake. He was under attack. And then he realized that he received the particle that was not always there inside of him. So if you are finding yourself in a battle that you're a holy being inside of yourself and negative thoughts are attacking you, your true self, it means something about your holiness. It means that you're a holy soul that is under attack. So it means that you're good. Even if you're being destroyed and crushed by that attack, Still, you're in the side of the Holy Ones. That's why you're being attacked. The fact that you're not going and hating and, and breaking and destroying and demolishing and, and rebuking and hating everyone and you're not the enemy, so you're good. You're good. You're in the good side. Now, many people today in our generation, I don't know what's going on in this community, but from like my experience, 
I see that people in the world, if they're not Jewish, they're losing their mind, wanting to convert. Like on those truth seekers, on those people that are, they love Israel, whatever, everyone needs to convert and they have to convert and they're looking for, there's no Beit Din court in our Jewish courthouse, in our community, in our state, no, not accepting converts, I don't know what to do, like people are moving states to convert, people are like losing their minds, an orthodox conversion, a reform conversion, I don't know what to do because they feel that the purpose that their goal is supposed to be to convert. And they feel with their low self-esteem that if they won't complete that process, they're out. But it's a mistake. It's a silly mistake. It's the same mistake that goes on in the life of a Jewish person that always feels wrong with himself. That if he hasn't woke up at 5 a.m., so he's not good enough. And if he was not praying in a minyan in the synagogue, so he's not good enough. And if he was not finishing Shabbat one hour later in time that calls Rabbeinu Tam, so it's not good enough. And nothing is good enough. So again, why nothing is good enough? Because you're the good, and the negative thoughts that they are your enemy are fighting with you. And they're battling you and they're trying to destroy your self-esteem because that's their mission to break your happiness and to humiliate you because they want you to forget who you are. But as long as you recognize inside of yourself that you are a truth seeker, that you are a holy soul, that you are a good person that is screaming for good, that is hoping, yearning for good, so stop criticizing yourself. That's the first step of healing your spirit. Coming back to be who you really are, and then you're gonna re be, then you're gonna understand who you really are. You're gonna connect to who you really are. You're gonna understand and recognize the nature of your soul, and you will go proudly to represent your faith your understanding about the mission of your life. And you won't need people to, to accept you, to justify you, to declare on you that you're okay, whatever. You can, you can be who you are, Jewish or not Jewish, connected or not connected, but like at least being who you are and being happy with that sharing, being happy with, with who you are. If 10 tribes, of the holy nation are still out there, I must tell you, I, as a Jewish person, don't think that I deserve that I am standing in a higher level than my siblings from different tribes. Even though that today I cannot recognize them as Jewish, as long as they are the children of Jacob and his wives, like, we were eating once on the same table, so we belong to the same table. And I'm not the head of the table, our father was the head of the table. Our mothers were the head of the table, not me and not them. Now, me, I have a role in this life. You have your job and your mission. We should work together. Now, maybe I kept a certain tradition. Was it my merit? I'm only a girl, not even 40 years old. Like, who, like I'm, I'm, who am I to tell you like, that I achieved? It's a joke. Like, the fact that I was born to a certain house, it's not my fault. Like, it's my parents. Like, they decided they got married. That's the only... Con I, I'm not connected to that. From heaven, they sent me to a certain house. And that's my part of that choice. And, like, and you've been sent to a different mission and you have your role over there to be a light to the world, to illuminate the light that is shining from your soul, from within yourself, to the people that are around you, to your community, to your surroundings, to your beloved ones, and to shine the light of truth that you feel that is real that you feel that is godly, that you feel that belongs to your reality. Because if I would find myself live in a different area, I would be foreign over there. 
But even if I will try to mingle and will try to talk, I will like, where did he came from? Because I am different, but you belong to that area and you can talk to the people and people will respect your opinion because that your background is similar, because that your way of expression is similar, because that you have the same terms and you have the same language and the same world of ideas and you're coming from the same background, that's why you can influence on them. That's why you are the link that is connecting to them and they need you to be who you are. They don't need you to be me, they don't need me to be you. They need us to be ourselves. So for that, our mission is similar. We should just work on our honesty. We should work only on being who we are and to not let our fears control our lives. That's our mission. We should just learn on ourselves who we really are and to go and to advertise it, to go and to share that wisdom of the talents that have been treasured inside of us, everyone to use the tools that he received from heaven, the ways of communications that are open to him, to the outside world, to the hearts and to the souls of his, the people that are around him, and to help them to become themselves. Because when you are searching within, what did you find? is a good thing. Inside of yourself you find the treasure, you find the precious soul, your spirit, your soul. Who are you? You can easily describe yourself as a kind person, a good person, that is hoping for good, that is trying to do good, that is happy to help, that is happy to see other people succeeding and growing. Like, even if you also are carrying my fears, I like I'm under a lot of pressure, like you have your cargo, you have your, your physical life experience, but in spirit, you are a good soul. So as long as you are a good soul, it means that your soul is coming from a divine good source a godly source, and that you have a portion of heaven installed inside of you. Now that is the beam of light, that's the laser beam that the Creator gave you to use in His world. He treasured inside of you the qualities and the power that He wants you to have in your mission. Now, He knows the mission. He sent you to that mission. And he put on you a certain armor, a certain disguise, a certain mask, a certain accent, a certain tools. He gave you certain powers that with them you will complete your role in life. You're going to deliver the news. You're going to reveal the light in your location, in your area, in your place. So for that, you need to be aware to who you are from within, that good personality that you are, that kind and simple person. You don't need to be a giant. It's just like an illuminating person, a good positive vibe, good spirit that wants to do good, wants the neighbors to have peace, wants the area to stay clean. You don't need to be a genius. You just need to bring out to the world something good. When people are telling me, hey, are you teaching the Jewish people in America that they should make Aliyah, that they should move to the Holy Land of Israel? I'm saying no, because I'm not. If someone is asking me and his heart is a flaming fire to move to Israel, enjoy. I'm not pushing no one to that direction. Why? I'm saying we have so much, the Israeli people in Israel, we have so much to learn from those guys that live in the States. Hey guys, there is like, we, the guys in Israel, we don't know how to run our life based on how that you know it over here. There are so many things here that are running in such wonderful and perfect ways that we should learn from you. Like there's so much culture so, so, so much polite, so much knowledge, so much like good industry and, and development of so many systems that in Israel are still broken. Now, it doesn't mean anything bad about Israel. It means that that knowledge that you purchase, that you're possessing, that you're holding here is needed over there. And we need to build a bridge 
We need to transform the information, the knowledge from one state to the next, from one family to the other. We need to help each other. It's not like, oh, you don't belong here, go that. No, I have a mission here with my neighbors and it's going to take me a few years to complete. Listen, I have that small store that I opened a few years ago. Like, I got married to that store. Now, I'm not going nowhere and it's not going nowhere. Like, it's a, it's a connection from heaven. It's not, I didn't want it, I didn't know, I didn't thought from heaven. You got married, you have children, they're in school systems, their future, family, many things, hobbies, views, plans that you planned with your wife, with your husband to like, we need to see Arizona, and you haven't done that yet. Things that you need to do, things that you need to complete now. The mission is to believe in yourself that you're on a mission even if all the world is standing on the other bank of the river and telling you you are wrong. You're not separating yourself from them by being who you are, even if they are telling you that you are. Their opinion doesn't matter. Only heaven's opinion counts. So when you are connected to heaven from within, when you're asking Hashem, when you're talking to the Creator, when you're asking Him, guide me in the path of truth, I want to know the truth. Please guide me. If you are honest and asking and you check yourself and you see that you are a truth seeker, that you are desiring the truth, that you try to do good, don't ever doubt yourself and don't ever doubt the greatness of your mission. Because you don't know what you do and you don't recognize who you are. And you don't understand the importance of your role. Because you with your smile can revive a dead person in the street. And if you won't smile to him today, he will die tomorrow. And you don't know how precious he is to his Father in heaven. You don't know still how important and great are those souls that are spreading the world and looking for the truth and asking for a purpose in life and don't know anything and are completely ignorant and lack of understanding, lack of knowledge and completely lost in the world with no understanding of their purpose and use. But you can go and shine upon them your simple smile, your drops of wisdom and understanding, your sparks of clarification, simple things that you realize that you need to be polite, that you need to be nice. With those things, we are channeling the light of heaven to the world because God works in mysterious ways and not only on the highways, not only on the obvious ways, not only in the front lines, not. In heaven, there are many, many projects. There are many, many missions to complete. People that they love the dolphins, that they are green people, that are vegetarians. All those people, they will have a role in the days of redemption in ways and sizes and measures that we cannot estimate, that we cannot understand yet. Because in the future to come, when the redemption will take place, so all the animals will live in peace together means that there will be new ways of communications with animals. So who will be those people that will teach us on how to communicate with animals? Those people that knows how to communicate with those animals today. They will receive an extra additional wisdom to know how to transfer their inner understanding to us, the ignorant ones, those ones that don't understand anything about dogs, about horses. We don't know anything. Maybe you cowboys, you know, but me, I don't know anything about that. So you will channel your knowledge to us and we're going to channel our knowledge to you. And that's exactly the godly plan. So you, even if you're a cowboy, you need to understand that as a cowboy you have your role in life. That you, as a, as a teacher, as a, as a store manager, you still don't know why they put you in that store. But it's for a purpose. It's for a cause. And as a person in a mission, as a person with a purpose, you should believe in the importance and the greatness of your mission and to go and to be proud and happy to be who you are. 
Now, if you feel that you need to have a change in life, you desire that change, maybe that's part of your path. But to chase yourself on not changing, to blame yourself, to hate yourself, to criticize yourself, all those negative thoughts are the thoughts of the evil inclination. And when they're attacking you, it's a reminder for you to remember that you are standing on the good side, that you have enemies, that robbers are trying to take what belongs to you, the precious stones that are the essence of your spirit. They are the diamonds and the rubies that those evil robbers are trying to hold, to steal from you, your happiness, your understanding, your inner feeling of completion, your sense for justice, the fact that you want to help other people, your high self-esteem, the fact that you want to respect people, that you're not afraid to say your opinion. That's what your evil inclination, your negative thoughts of sadness, of depression, of frustration, of anger, of despair, are trying to destroy your good character, your inner character is the enemy of darkness. From that you should understand that you are a lighthouse and in that role you should, you, you should run your life to be that lighthouse, to go and shine with no end, to shine the light that you know that be treasured inside of you and even if it's, it seems neurotic sometimes, but even if like, I'm so ADD, like I'm so crazy, like, don't worry, there's a reason for that. Crazy people made huge changes in the world. If they wouldn't be so crazy on one detail, they wouldn't investigate it for 50 years to understand why it's moving to the right and not to the left. Like, only a crazy person can spend half of his life on electricity, on, but, but he could brought down and revealed the electricity. Because of him today, we can talk in a shiny room, in an illuminating room, because it, he was crazy. Because he invested every drop of blood of his life and his time, and he didn't see the world, and he didn't left his office ever, because he was so neurotic, because, because his name was Newton. That, like, that, that's the only reason. And, and, and suddenly there is a, a, a good reaction because of his craziness. And one will open an amazing school, and one will teach people how to live in peace and harmony with each other. And one will speak and make Facebook Lives, and one will compose and make music and, and deliver it and distribute and will change the hearts of people. And every person, I remember once, I like, as a person that is involved in social media, and we always desire our project, we always desire that, that our message will go and, and become viral, that, that, that it will go and spread widely, much more than it is today. And even if we'll have a million views on every video, we'll want 100 million views. Like, it, it, it's a never-ending story. But I remember that once I sat and I was like frustrated. I said to my wife, like, why? The message is good and we're doing the best that we can. And like, there are certain walls that we're, it's, we're not breaking those walls. Why? And, and then she told me, you know what the difference between one video of yours that hit, let's say, 2,500 people, 5,000 people, to a video that made like 500 million views. She said, you know what's the difference? She said, your video changed the life of those 2,500 people. And that video that reached 500 million people, it gave them something that will disappear and melt with time. But your video changed their life. So when you're bringing something meaningful, powerful, something strong, something real, it will hit the wall. There will be a lot of rejection, a lot of fight against it. And again, why? 
because of its holiness, because of its purity, because of its goodness. That's why you are isolated. That's why you're alone. That's why you're not communicated. Because the Creator made you so precious and so fragile because of that, that you are vulnerable, that you can break. And you feel that it's better for you sometimes to hide. And you are right. And it is better for you. And out of your loneliness, and out of your failures, and out of your downs, from those hard moments when you open your honest mouth and you express the true desire of your heart in prayer or in your learning or in a simple conversation with one friend that you still have, you're making a change in the world. Because the words that are coming out of your mouth in that time are not similar to the words of those talkers that can open their mouth and talking to thousands of people. Their words are empty compared to your honest thoughts, to your meaningful words that are coming straight from the heart. Even when you buy a bag of milk in the grocery store, you're doing it with grace. You're doing it with heaven intention, heavenly intention. You are delivering the light of heaven when you cross the street, when you are crossing the street in honesty. And you're just being a simple person, but your light is shining because it's the light of your soul that is shining. And the light of your soul is not only the light of your soul. Who am I? I'm just a small soul. No, no. Your soul is a godly soul. If it's good, it belongs somewhere else. It's not part of this world. This world is a physical world. And spirituality is trapped in that world. When you recognize the good part inside of you, remember that good part belongs to heaven. Like we said, that good inclination inside of you, that pure soul that has so many enemies, has those enemies because of its goodness, because it's not belong to you, because it's about to crack the fake illusion of this world, because it's godly, because it's divine, because it's illuminating. And you should believe in yourself that even that you just simply cross the street with your simplicity, you made a change in that street. Even if our physical eyes are blind to see. I heard a story on one righteous man that he went to the mikveh and he was about to enter to the mikveh and then he stopped and he said, Hey, who was the person that dipped in that mikveh before of me? And he went and started looking, and then he went outside and he found, he, he saw one of the biggest and heathen righteous people of that generation. And he could see that in the water, something that we cannot see. For us, water, if they're clear, they're clear. If they're filthy, they're filthy. That's what we can see. But people with eyes, they can see the impression uh, that been left in the water by the last person that was there in the big of a spiritual impression. So he ran after that person he could recognize. The same person will recognize your tracks when you cross the street with your pure intention. Because if you are walking and working and living your life based and leaning and counting on the inner light of your soul, you're shining. No matter who you are and how you think about yourself and what other people think about you, when you're working from within, when you're delivering an inner good message that you feel that is coming from inside, that's it. You are a soldier. You are a warrior. You're a child. You're, I don't know who you want to be called. You are one with heaven. You're a messenger and deliverer of heavenly light to the world. And you can never understand the greatness of your actions. You don't know how powerful you are. You should believe in that. You should believe that God is working through you. That God is using you for His purpose. And He knows why. And He knows why I need to spend half of my life 
watering those mandarin trees. I don't know what I call but he knows. Certain souls, certain spirits are attached to those trees, growing inside those fruits, people receiving those fruits, peeling them, eating them, enjoying those spiritual sparks inside the fruit. You don't know it, but the heart that you had when you watered those trees changed the nature of those fruits. And you don't know how the Creator is shipping those boxes and to which houses and on which holiday tables those mandarins are being delivered and being offered and who are the people that are enjoying it. But the Creator, He sees it all. He knows that the million slices of those fruits that you were watering and taking care of, that for you, you felt like, I'm an empty person with no purpose in his life, watering my trees, don't know what to do, trying to make a living. You don't know that your light is treasured inside those fruits and been sent to thousands of houses and millions of slices went into millions of mouths and people received something spiritual because of you. And if your heart was aimed to the purpose when they ate that fruit, when they drank the milk from your grocery store, their life will improve. Something spiritual will happen to them while drinking that simple cup of coffee. Something that wouldn't happen if you wouldn't be involved with that milk bag that they just used for their cup of coffee. You don't know what the Creator is doing with you when you write a book, when you have a phone conversation, when you speak to a person in the street. You cannot see it with your eyes. You can sense it with your heart. When you are connected to your heart, when you are who you are, when you're working from within, I'm begging you to believe in yourselves. Don't change. Be. Let the Creator guide you in your path of development to be who you are and to spread the godly light that He treasures inside of you and let Him shine from within. Be your true selves. Work from within. You will see the changes are coming to you. You will see what is the next step for you. He will guide you when you will be tuned when you will be aware to your inner voice. Thank you. And Hashem bless you. And be strong. And be positive. And be proud. And no matter what you go through in life, don't let those waves break you because they meant to purify you. Receive them with your armor, with your body, but suck the essence, the wisdom, the conclusions with your soul with your spirit and let it uplift you to new places, to new worlds, to new understandings of growth. And like that you can live eternal life in a temporary world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.